Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. So this video is going to be number three of what now I am officially going to name as the vault. Uh, we're just tidying up the last few pieces today and then we've got some paint. But for right now, why don't you guys come on inside and I'll show you what's going on. All right, so I just got done installing the door. Uh, just two hinges, a simple latch to grab onto, and then how we're actually keeping this door secured is I went ahead and just used ball mounts. So spring-loaded balls that the springs are very, very, very tough, and then a strike plate up, up under here, and then there's one on the top and one on the bottom. So striker plate down there, another ball hinge in there, and when you close it, it actually gives a pretty tight uh, secure. And then as you can see, that door is very little. So again, it acts as like a little secret entrance way. And I am going to trim that out because those cuts are horrible. Uh, the hinges kind of pushed the door over as I made the cut on that side and the cut on that side. So I had to cut back this side a little bit and nothing's uh, really straight. But I'm going to put some trim around here going all the way down to hide this. And then I might, when I'm in here, I might just put like a big old like bolt style latch or something on here. So I can just uh, pull over, pull down, and then it's locked in and then no one can come in while I'm in here. But uh, yeah, so we'll trim that out, make it look pretty. We've got to do some trim along the baseboards and I am going to put a piece of trim down on the, the door also. Uh, we've got our corners to do, still do upper pieces up in there and then the close off this one little section left over here and then like I said we'll uh, talk about uh, get the painting and stuff like that and I did go ahead and put a chair rail kind of system up in here and that is actually going to be where the rack system actually sits on so it'll sit on this chair rail will go up to pretty much the seam up there and then I'm going to put a piece of trim up there too so all the way up and around the uh, rack system it'll be trimmed in in this poplar and uh, yeah that's about it for that and if you guys have noticed I got a TV down in here uh, right now it's just sitting on the safes I was going to mount it higher but uh, I think I'm not going to mount it higher because I'm actually going to put something up in there um, I found a picture of my grandfather's World War II battleship that he was on. It was called the Indiana, the BB-58. And I uh, sent that picture off to someone to basically make it into a poster. So we're going to have my grandfather's battleship up in that section right there. And again, things that are going to kind of relighten the room back up because we have the black walls. And then I don't know when I'll actually finish this video. It may be kind of long to do because the money's going to be tight on actually buying these rack systems. I may have to buy like one section at a time over like a month or so uh, because they're not cheap. The, the cheapest system that I could find just for a rack system that would go out 12 feet, uh, we're already over like $1,200. And that's including hooks to hook on and to hold the amount of guns that I have right now. And uh, yeah, uh, I probably won't ever be able to afford more racks on this side. So this side just may get done in like posters, flags, other memorabilia, stuff like that. And then wherever my bench is going to go. So uh, yeah, like I said, it just may be a while before I purchase everything. But at least for this wall over here, that's where the majority 12 feet out uh, 52 inches high that's where that rack system will be over on this wall and then again down the road we'll figure out what we're gonna do for the ceiling but for right now I kind of want to show you guys something uh, had this out in the shed uh, thermometer and uh, humidity and right now it says it's 70 degrees in here and 66% humidity well just about an hour or so ago it was 69% humidity down in here. So what I've decided to do about that is I did go ahead and buy a dehumidifier. Now, the reason why I did that is because it's not that I don't trust in the Mr. Cools actually being able to dehumidify, 
but it's gonna be a minute before I can purchase all of the Mr. Cools at once and the cost is about $10,000 for everything. Now, this Tabashi uh, dehumidifier can do up to 50 pints a day or six and a quarter gallons of water. And in fact, when we fired it up, we were at 64% and now we're down to 60 and I've got it set at 55. So even though we don't have the back door and the back windows in and we're not completely airtight, at least down here in the basement when I start putting stuff over in there, um, it's going to start to bring it down. Now, as you can see at the unit itself, I don't know if they're 100% accurate, but at the unit itself saying 60 and in the room over there saying 66, that just could be a percentage difference between the two measurements, or it may really be 66 over in there. But again, we started at 69, we started at 64, and now we're down to 60, and now we're down to 66. So it is doing something down in this basement, and it is very comfortable down in here right now, and actually even a little cool at that 70 degrees because the air that this thing blows out is actually a little cool. Um, it does have a defrosting setting in there, so that's probably why. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get it less humid in here. $200 is a lot quicker and easier to spend right now than 10,000. So we're just gonna have to wait and that little guy is just gonna have to hopefully do its job. But I'm gonna get back to finishing out, uh, doing all of the trim and everything in here and basically calling the inside of this done until again, we get the rack system. And uh, till then, hang tight and I'll be back in a little bit. All right, everybody, I just got finished with what I can. I just ran out of uh, trim work. I only need eh, a few more boards. Like I said, I went ahead and put up some upper trim up there to hide that gap. And then we've got a little over 52 inches in between there and there. So that way, if we set a panel in there, it'll fit perfectly. I got the door all completely trimmed out and man, it closes real well, like real solid. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I don't know if I should put some more over here or like, uh, obviously you can't put trim over the crack or else the door can't open. But I'm wondering if you can like just put a piece right there to almost like you're hiding that crack there. So the panel the, or the uh, trim piece would basically sit right here just over top of that. Or maybe if I did push it over a little bit and gave it kind of a back cut, I don't know. Um, but just trying to make that look a little bit better, uh, especially with some gaps up in there. I'll have to think about how I'm gonna do that. But at least for right in there, it's all completely closed in. The corners are all done. Like I said, I ran out, so I need one little piece up here, and then I'll need uh, about 24 more feet to go up on this side. But I'm not gonna hang this side yet until I actually get the racks, so that way I know that they're exactly 52 inches tall going up there, so I don't have to move the trim or modify anything. But uh, dehumidifier is working. We're at 59% right now, and we were at 69 when we started. Uh, I just emptied that thing already, so it filled up an entire bucket full already. Like I said, I'm gonna have to get a uh, garden hose that just goes down into the sump pump, so it constantly uh, doesn't fill up, and just constantly uh, doesn't need maintenance or uh, doing any, me having to do anything with it. But uh, yeah, so like I said, this video is gonna be a, lot, a while in the making. We're gonna have to buy those things. We're gonna have to still stain and do all that stuff. But uh, at least, what do you guys think about that? Uh, clothes is solid, uh, looks nice, except for this open piece right here. Like I said, I'll have to figure out how I'm gonna hide this a little bit more. And uh, then when we get on this side, drywall will go against this. And how I'm gonna hide these two seams on this side is I'm gonna do basically a uh, board and batten on this side. So it'll all be drywall, but then the board and batten strips will cover up this one and this one, and I'll continue that board and batten down inside of the closet. And uh, I may put some like uh, coat hooks right here so that way when I'm leaving and this is drywalled and completely smooth, you kind of have to like grab a coat hook to be able to pull the door shut now. And then that way again, it's uh, hidden and you wouldn't really think that the coat hook is supposed to push or pull on anything. So we'll uh, do that when I get drywall on this side. So hang tight, I'll be back when uh, we get more done and when we get those panels in and we actually start uh, making this thing look like an actual 
uh, room that can be proud enough called the vault. Hey everybody, welcome back into the vault. It's been a few weeks since I've been down here, just been dealing with other stuff on the house and been working. But uh, two things showed up that I wanted to start showing you guys about how I'm gonna decorate and start showing things on the wall. So that uh, picture I was talking about of my grandfather's ship showed up. So we're gonna take it and get it framed and again, hang it above the TV. And then I also found this cool flag again of the USS Indiana BB-58 that I will hang probably on this wall over here where I'm not gonna have guns and we'll just hang that up. And then again, that's the picture that I was talking about that I found online. Uh, I know there's probably a glare on there, so I'm trying to get a good image of it there. But uh, I can't remember when that was leaving port, but as you can see, it's early in World War II because they actually did used to camouflage paint uh, some of the battleships. And then later in the war, I think they just went to mostly an all, um, like uh, kind of the gray that you see most ships nowadays. Uh, Again, that was just back in the early days for them trying to figure out, you know, could we camouflage on water and stuff like that. But once radar came into full swing and stuff, uh, it's really pointless to uh, camouflage a boat because radar is going to pick them out anyway. But interesting fact enough, um, my grandfather was on the USS Indiana when in World War II. It actually struck the USS Washington. Uh, my grandfather was actually on that boat when they ran into each other like late at night. And I've got to verify the story. Um, my grandfather's brother, my great uncle, or yeah, great uncle, he, I believe, was on the USS Washington. So two brothers actually uh, ran into each other and hit each other. Um, but they weren't driving the boat. My grandfather's job on this uh, battleship was actually firing the gun. So uh, kind of a cool job, I guess, to do uh, out on the sea, out in uh, the Navy. But uh, not really a good time to be in World War II, but I know that generation is like beyond any generation that we'll ever see to come. They're, they were just amazing. But uh, again, that's two things we're going to deck this out with. That poster will go up there. The flag will go down this wall. And then again, I still have to figure out if we are going to paint or if I'm just going to keep bringing the stain this way. Because staining is a huge pain in the ass. It takes forever. Oh, and before I forget, the dehumidifier is working excellent. We maintain at 55 degrees in here. Granted, we still have obviously the roof or the ceiling opened up. So that airflow is the same over there as it is in here. But uh, it seems to shut off. Uh, it takes a while for it to shut off. Um, it, it runs for a while. Then you can hear kind of the compressor or condenser or whatever is in a dehumidifier shutting off. And then it's kind of like just a fan runs and then it completely shuts off. But uh, that, that's pretty impressive to have the, the house not completely buttoned up with, again, the back door, those two windows, and the ceiling and everything not being drywalled, but for that dehumidifier to actually keep it at 55 degrees down in the basement. That is pretty impressive. I do like this thing. And then I want to show you guys a little bit, some updates down in here. I think I talked about this in the electric video, but as you can see, we started framing out the bedroom. So we've got one bedroom. That's the door going in for that one. That is the Jack and Jill bathroom that I will put a uh, uh, wall right here to go all the way down to split that bathroom. And then over in here, this is the doorway for the second bedroom down in the basement. So I just have to come under the stairs there and go on in. Uh, we are going to frame this out that this underneath of the stairs will be like a closet. And I think we're actually going to put the kitty litter and stuff under there and their, uh, where they go to the bathroom. So it'll be under here. There'll be another door like right here. So you'll open up and you have some extra storage and stuff underneath uh, the stairwell there. And then this will get framed out. Uh, this will go from the stairwell all the way up to there solidly. Um, and then you'll start a, a hand railing as you come down here. So you only have to come down like seven steps or something, and then you can look down and actually see into the basement. So this won't be a solid wall here. It'll, it will go from the floor up to here for, again, where you can put your hand on there and guide yourself down on there. And then I think I told you this guys before, these stairwells, this stringer is now bolted to this wall. So it is very solid, very tight. Uh, I did have to use two pieces of blocking to make up for the difference. 
but this wall is now secure and that stringer doesn't really have a lot of room to bend or anything because it's attached to that wall. But I like it. That's very tight, very secure, very a lot more strong. Went ahead and put a cross brace on here too. So these support legs right here, the stairs didn't want to shimmy or shake or move from side to side, but uh, that's a hell of a lot more bulletproof than it was. And uh, it's very secure, I love it now. So hang tight, I uh, placed the order for the wall system. We actually did go with a different company, uh, a cheaper company than what I originally thought I was gonna go with. Um, I contacted both companies and the shipping was ridiculous for both of them. Both of them wanted to ship panels for like over a hundred dollars a panel. And yes, I understand a four foot piece of metal or 41 inches to be exact. Um, weight has some weight to it. The company I'm going with now, they're 41 inches by 16 inches tall and they weigh 15 pounds a piece, but shipping was like almost $300. So I had to contact them and ask, you know, is there any love? Can you do anything for me? Uh, they did give me a discount code and I am now going with Gallo Tech. So if you go to gallotech.com, they again have a full type of rack system and hooks and everything. And you can uh, put their system like on the inside of safes and on the doors of safes so you can hang even more stuff. So go check out gallotech.com. And uh, they, I think, had the best panel. Um, they, they had the longest panel, only 16 inches tall versus the other company had, they were more height than they were width. Um, Gallo Tech is more width than height, but they've got many different sizes and types of panels that they uh, actually have. But I'm just going with the uh, one that's 16 by 41, and we're gonna get about 13 feet or so down that wall. The only thing is because they're not as tall uh, where I put the trim, I will have to lower the trim on the one side that I have not trimmed up here yet. But then on the other wall where I probably won't put any panels, that trim can just stay where it is um, unless I can kind of not sit the panels directly on the chair rail trim and kind of, you know, give it a little bit of a, you know, cheek it one way or another to make it look good. But uh, we'll, we'll see when they show up. But uh, again, they were a lot cheaper. Uh, they actually worked with me, gave me a nice gift discount. So again, Gallo Tech, thank you for helping out and uh, give me that discount. All right, it's time. UPS just dropped everything off. Uh, panels are here and another box. I didn't buy like a million accessories with this wall system. Just got the panels and just got enough hooks to hang what I currently own on there. And uh, let's open these boxes up and let's see what we actually got. Okay, well, no surprise that it was $300 to ship this stuff. Uh, I really don't think you need that many boxes for the panels. Um, that makes it just way too uh, difficult because each one of those boxes needs shipped with its own code and the price really goes up the more boxes you have. Yes, I understand when you put too much weight in one box, that also jacks the price up, but I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think these panels are, or each box, it's, uh, they're heavy, but they're not that heavy. Can't be more than 28 pounds or 30 pounds or something, but let's open one up and see what these panels look like. And uh, I can't get them installed right away. We still have to uh, finish staining the wall because unfortunately I do have to stain behind these ones because the other system you couldn't see through the panel, but these ones you can see through the panel. So if I don't stain it, every little hole where there's a, a hook that goes in, you're just gonna see the regular wood color of the uh, um, particle board. So that sucks, I do have to stain that. But uh, hold on, let me open one of these up and we'll see how they install. All right, now before anybody says anything and they start freaking out about me, not having money and the cost was there and obviously we gotta build the house, uh, number one, these were about half the price of what I said the other system was, or at least what I've spent. Um, I got more panels because these were longer than the other companies, so I was able to get more square footage than the other one where I said it was gonna be about $1,200. I only spent about $600 here. Uh, number one, because they gave me the discount. And number two, uh, two days ago was my birthday. So yes, I know it's crazy. I'm almost 40 years old. Well, some of my family members still like to give birthday cards with money in it. So by the time I applied that money down to these panels, plus the discount from Gallotech, I'm only about $600 in these panels. And uh, 
Again, to get almost 13 feet on one wall, uh, I don't think that's that bad. Plus with all the, the hooks for the guns that I currently own. So without further ado, that's what we got. So these are again, the longest panels that Galotech makes and they uh, are the thinnest. So this was also cheaper than Galotech's normal panels is because these panels are called the thin panels. The thick panels are just that much thicker off of the wall, but the way those work is you have to purchase more parts to get the thing to actually even install. And the first thing you do is you have to basically install like a rail system, like up on top. Like you have to buy this trim kit like this, bolt that to the wall, and then the thick panels, they hang on with like a key mod system. So you'll have like a, you know, a circle with a, a slit and you have to take each additional panel, hang it on the key mod, slide it over one inch, and then that panel locks onto that panel. And this panel is locked on to the upper trim piece. And then you still put screws and everything to hold it down. So it's not just one thing holding it. Um, but uh, that's just more parts that you have to purchase and then even a lower piece that you have to like finish it off and bolt it on. These panels don't need any trim work. It's literally just that panel and every one of these holes right here, that is where you put a screw through. So you could literally put on that one panel alone, it looks like you could probably put over 200 screws in one panel. Um, so you can really bolt these things down. Now, just like the other panels, they say that they are 14 gauge steel. So that's as thick as what my safe is made out of. So it's a, whether you say that's a thick panel or, or a thin panel, uh, I think that's at least strong enough that uh, 14 gauge will be holding everything up. So let's go ahead and take some of these down in the basement, set them up on the chair rail. We'll bust open that box over there and we'll see what uh, it actually looks like when we try to hang something on it. Okay, actually a little bit more unboxing here. So they only put two panels per box and I believe the website said each one of these panels weighs 15 pounds. And then if I remember correctly, somehow they actually said the shipping overall was 33 pounds per box. Uh, I don't think the cardboard weighs that much, but uh, anyway, so there's only two panels in each box, so that's why they had to send so many boxes. Uh, personally, I would have tried to sneak more in there, but maybe they just know what's best for, um, you know, three panels or four panels in a box. Each box, the price goes up even higher than splitting them up, so maybe they already know that. But uh, here are their brackets that we are using. Uh, they have tons and tons and tons of accessories to go on these. So far, like I said, all I have purchased is basically the actual racks themselves. And these are the extra wide. So um, that's wide enough that you can put anything on there where like you're actually like the, the, the handrail or something of a gun will actually fit in that groove there instead of the thinner ones where the thinner ones you like you only would be able to basically um and put uh, the buffer tube on there or the actual barrel but i think this being a little bit wider just gives you a little bit more versatility so the way these work obviously uh not really a key mod but you've got a thing right there where you set it down in between two slide it on down and then it comes with this lock screw that it'll go through the actual hanger and you'll actually screw right into the metal. And then this actually can't fall off if you go to pick up a gun or something because that screw holds it back. So now let's go down in the basement and uh, actually install one. We'll take it back off. We'll finish out the, uh, the staining and then we'll hang this tonight hopefully. All right, just tried to call Gallo Tech. Uh, they're busy, nobody answers. So I contacted the guy that uh, gave me the discount and asked him. Um, since these don't use a key mod system uh, for hanging each one, I'm just kind of curious how many screws they recommend for each and every hole or for each and every panel. Uh, we definitely, I think, should have long enough screws. We're using these uh, two inch coated deck screws that uh, we should hopefully be long enough to be able to go through the panel, through the 5 8 plywood and actually hit the ICF stud location. So that would probably be the strongest point. Um, but uh, two inches actually may not be it. I may, I do have some three inches that we may have to think about because the panel's about that thick, plus the five eighths, plus a little bit of the foam till you actually get into the webbing. And uh, we may only be getting into the webbing like just a hair. But again, that's why I used five eighths. So we can go ahead and put 
200 screws in each panel if I actually wanted to. So it doesn't really matter, but I'm just curious what they recommend. All right, so the first thing, I actually have to know which way these go. I think it actually goes this way. Uh, like I said, I can set it right there on that chair rail like that, or I can put a little bit of a buffer off of that chair rail, because again, with these only being 16 inches, we're not gonna reach the top of that seam. But uh, on this wall, it doesn't really matter because I can bring down that upper piece of trim down to basically then just sit on top of the panel. And obviously with these screws in here and the ICS being every eight inches on center, I can just go ahead and put a screw through that hole into that stud and then into that one. And then I can even put an extra one. So basically I can just go ahead and hit every stud every eight inches. So whatever Gallotech says, uh, I guess it doesn't really matter since I've got more options than a typical uh, 16 inch on center wall. Just go ahead and put a screw every eight inches. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, most ICF walls uh, with a two by four and a screw uh, into their webbing actually holds up like 150 pounds per screw. Now, whether or not the screw can actually hold 150 pounds, that's uh, here or there, but uh, enough screws on the top and the bottom, you're, I'm never gonna, I don't have guns that weigh 500, 600 pounds, so don't have to worry about that breaking. But uh, I know with uh, ICF, I think build blocks, Build Blocks actually has 150 pounds in their normal thickness, but every so often there's a reinforcement spot on the Build Block ICFs where there's actually 450 pounds of hold strength because instead of a thin little piece of plastic that you're hitting, there's over like a half of an inch of plastic that uh, again in certain spots that you can actually put a screw through and then the more plastic that you're screwing into obviously the more holding power but again can a screw actually hold up 450 pounds uh, i don't know about that but uh yeah let, let's go ahead and figure out at least where we want to start these panels uh you know maybe right there so we're not interfering with the door opening or anything and then uh, we'll see how many we can get as we go on down. And let's actually measure these panels to make sure they actually are a true 41 by 16. Yep. Yep. All right, they're a true 16 by 41. And you know what? Screw it. Just for extra security and be safe, let's just go ahead and upgrade to the 3 inch. I've got a 700 uh, of these in a box and I'm running out of the two inch. So this will just guarantee that we can go through and we can hit these straps and uh, we won't have any worry. Oh, and here's the other thing I'm gonna do real quick. Uh, instead of staining this, because it takes so long to put on and then wipe with a rag, let's go ahead and just actually, where these panels are gonna go, where you're not gonna see anything, let's actually just go ahead and paint it black. That way um, the panels will overhang on the actual stain that way all this stays the same and I don't have to move anything or paint anything and uh, redo all this. But let's go ahead and at least paint because that will be a lot faster with a roller or with a, uh, a brush. All right, so that's where four panels is gonna take us to. So we're good on here. We can just go ahead and start painting somewhere right in here. And then over there, we'll just go ahead and paint like an inch in. So that way, again, you never see the paint. And then as you're looking through these holes right now, you, you can't tell, is that black paint or is that black stain? Uh, no one's gonna know. But let's go ahead and mark this out. We'll know now exactly where that's gonna be. And uh, we'll just go ahead and measure on up where uh, it'll end. And then the same thing, we'll just go ahead and uh, paint like an inch below. And then all we have to do is stain up in there and stain the upper piece of trim. And then I may actually trim this out once more. So I think I already said this in the video. I may put a piece of trim right here, go up and over. So that way it just kind of boxes it in very nice. Even though these edges, they are finished off pretty nice. So it doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, let's measure this out, mark it, and let's take these back off and let's go ahead and paint it.
All right guys, finishing up for the day here. Just got this wall done and I gotta get out of here and go get dinner. Fumes in here are killing me even though it's open. Uh, but we got this wall pretty much stained all the way to there. I just have to do the bottom. And then of course, more staining or painting on this side depending on how we're gonna do it. With like, for example, I obviously did not need this stain behind here. But uh, we'll just see how many more posters and stuff we want and we can save a little bit of time and uh, hassle on painting or staining. But panels are up. They are super hard and strong. Uh, I did have a little bit of video here a second ago. Uh, I was on time lapse though, so I was talking in no time. But uh, uh, my rig is the heaviest thing on this wall and fully outfitted on this rig with uh, eight magazines, two magazines for pistol, the plates themselves, and a uh, trauma pack basically. This thing I think weighs uh, almost 30 some pounds. So I'll replace this piece of rebar in here so it doesn't get rust everywhere and I'll get like a big fat wooden dowel so it's a little bit uh, more curved than like cutting into the shoulder shafts here. But with this thing removed, uh, you can see that wall panel, it does not move at all. Um, these things are really secure. Everything is pretty much bulletproof. And on this one particular panel alone, that is the only thing that's on that, which uh, actually, I'm pretty sure almost every gun on here currently is only on one panel except, oh, uh, this long rifle is uh, sitting over top of two. But uh, yeah, the, I haven't finished it out. Uh, we'll come back to this at a later video if I get everything installed that I currently own, which I won't be able to fill this up. I don't own that much more, but uh, there are several pieces that aren't on here yet. And uh, I'll come back to this video at a later time and actually show you what the entire room looks like. And when I get my workbench down in here and figure out what I want to do with that and with stools and uh, um, get my brass cleaner tumbler down in here so I can actually start cleaning and reloading and stuff. But we'll come back and visit it at, another, at a later time. But uh, I'm going to wrap this video up here and today up here. Go get some dinner. So if you guys like this video, hit that thumbs up. If you like the way it's looking, hit the thumbs up. If you can think of anything else that I can do or things that I should change out, let me know. Let me know what you guys want to see on the ceiling in here. Uh, instead of just maybe just boring drywall, let me know if there's something else. But uh, until then, I will see you guys next time. Subscribe if you're not already. Turn the bell on so you get notified of upcoming or future videos when they get posted so you can watch, comment, you name it. And uh, hit us up on Neck of the Woods 2020 on Instagram. Till then, we'll see you guys next time.